Okay. All right. So let's start the first question. So we go to section A. All right, section A, answer all questions in this section. Table 1 shows the melting and the boiling point of P, Q, R and S. So guys, melting point. Melting point ni apa? Melting point is when respond when what? Melting point when melting point when solid eh, constant temperature. Ayolah. Melting point ni bila solid change to liquid. Okay, the one is the melting point. Okay. Very good, Menda. Okay, next. Okay, now we go to boiling point. Boiling point when liquid change to gas. So, first question. Look at the first question. State the meaning of melting point. They ask you what is the definitions of melting point. So, soalan definition dah cakap banyak kali. Question untuk definition mesti complete then you can get one mark. So melting point is temperature okay, temperature at which solid change to liquid. Dapat tepat macam ni then you dapat one mark. Okay next. Okay, next question. What is the physical state of substance R at room condition? Okay, how to identify? What is the physical state uh, of R at room temperature? Okay, kita tengok. Kalau room temperature, dia punya temperature lebih kurang around 25 degree Celsius. So, you must know the temperature for uh, room temperature. Okay, so 25 degree Celsius. You fill up here at the table 1. Okay, kalau macam substance P, 25 is here. Okay. Q, 25 is in between melting point and boiling point. 25 is here for R and 25 is before melting point for S. Okay, now dia tanya what is the physical state of substance R? Okay, kita circlekan substance R. Kita tahu kalau melting point before negative 77 is solid. Okay, in between here is liquid and then after negative 35 is gas. Yes. So the question asks you at room temperature. So room temperature is here means the boiling point. The physical state is gas. Okay, next. Okay, next question. State the changes of kinetic energies one kinetic energy one and forces of attraction two between particle substance q when cool from room temperature to negative 10. Okay first kita tengok cool from room temperature is 25. Okay room temperature is 25 to negative 10. Okay next kita tengok dekat atas Cool, cool at room temperature. Okay, room temperature 25 to negative 10. Okay, dekat sini. So, negative, uh, so daripada room temperature tu negative 10. So, around here. Okay, kita tahu kalau dia uh, cool maksudnya from liquid to solid. So, from liquid From liquid to solid. Okay. From liquid to solid. Okay. State the changes in the kinetic energy. So kamu kena state macam mana changes. So kena state before and after. So kinetic energy here. Kinetic energy decreases. Okay. Decreases. And then how about the force of attraction? Force of attraction sebab from liquid to solid. Force of attraction. Force of attraction become stronger. Become stronger. 
Okay, force of attraction become stronger Sebab bila liquid, attractions dia uh, less stronger than solid So daripada solid, daripada liquid to solid The force of attraction become stronger Kinetic energy pula, bila solid dia hanya vibrate So the kinetic energy dia decrease compared to liquid Liquid dia still move and vibrate Tapi kalau solid dia hanya vibrate Okay next, we go to question number four Sorry, question B Diagram 1 shows the reactions of the first three elements of alkali metal. Alkali metal ni group berapa guys? Alkali metal. Alkali metal group berapa? Force of attraction. Okay, very good. Group 1. Okay, force of attraction. Eh, sorry, alkali metal is group 1. So we have W, X and Y. Which beaker shows the reaction of potassium in water? Okay, guys. Usually, for group 1, hanya ada three elements yang dia akan saling berkaitan. Apa dia? Apa three elements yang saling berkaitan for group 1? Ada tiga saja yang famous. Selalunya apa? Okay, very good. We have lithium, sodium and one more. Potassium, very good. So we know that lithium is uh, the smallest one compared to uh, sodium and potassium. Okay, when down the group means from lithium to sodium to potassium, which one have the highest uh, reactivity? Which one the reactivity dia paling tinggi? Sodium, potassium or sodium, uh, lithium? Potassium. Reason? Why potassium is the most reactive between uh, compared to sodium and lithium? Because... Welcome Kacun. Why? Why potassium is uh, more reactive? Okay, because the atomic size is bigger. Very good Jane, very good Ifan. So when the size is bigger, what happen? I mesti sebut satu-satu. Okay, bila size dia besar, what happen? When the size is bigger then, okay, electrostatic forces dia become weaker. Why weaker, Puiman? Kenapa weaker? Because? Why weaker? Okay, very good. The distance between proton in the nucleus to the electron at the outermost shells is further. Bila dia jauh, maka uh, uh, attraction forces dia become weaker. Betul peman, sambungan, so it's easy to release electron to achieve octet electron arrangement. Very good. Pandai. Nah, kamu kena tahu, setiap reason tu you kena tahu. Kalau you tak tahu reason tu, you tak tahu nak goreng untuk paper, uh, two especially for section B and C. Kamu kena tahu kenapa jadi macam ni, kenapa jadi macam ni, kenapa jadi macam ni. Kena tahu. Okay now, which beaker shows the reaction of potassium? Kita tahu dalam banyak-banyak ni potassium is the most reactive. Maksudnya dia yang paling bertindak balas paling uh, paling obvious sekali in water. So WXY, which one is potassium? Very good. Pandai Amanda, pandai Zing Yu, potassium is X. Sebab kita tengok banyak uh, apa bubble release. Okay next. Name the gas evolve when the metals react with water. Okay macam mana kita nak tahu gas apa yang terhasil? Kita buatlah chemical equation between potassium dengan uh, water. Okay kita tengok eh when potassium react with water. And then the product are potassium hydroxide plus hydrogen gas. So hydrogen gas is the gas evolved. So the answer is bila dia kata name, tolong tulis nama hydrogen gas. Kalau kamu tulis simbol saja, markah kamu akan ditolak walaupun jawapan kamu tepat. Okay, write the chemical equation for the reaction in beaker W or in beaker Y. So mana-mana pun sama. W plus H2O and then the product is WOH plus H2. So one mark for the correct equation and the second mark make sure the equation in balance. Okay, kita tengok balance tak? Sini tak balance. So we put two here. Okay, we put two here. We got four and then two here and then Four here. So kita dapatlah this one. Eh salah. Two here. Okay sini two. 
Okay, this one is two. Okay, balance kan? Cannot write the metal and A boleh sebab kamu dah tahu kan W tu apa, X tu apa, Y tu apa so should be okay. Tak ada masalah Amanda. Alright. So the equation make sure correct, one mark, balance, another one mark. Okay now, what can you infer about the density? Ah, senang saja. Dia minta kamu buat macam conclusion about the density of group 1 metals compared to water. Tengok sahaja dekat atas. We know that when group 1 in water, the group 1 will float. Okay, dengar eh, group 1 ni dia floating. Okay, group 1 ni dia float. Okay, so kita ceritalah kenapa dia float. Sebab metal group 1, metal group 1 less dense then water. Alright. Okay. Settle question number one. Any question? Okay, very good Jane. Betul. Ada soalan for question number one? If not, cikgu nak proceed. Ada masalah tak dalam uh, topik ni? This topic. Any problem with this topic? Okay, no. Okay, very good. So, kalau, kalau keluar topik ni dalam SPM, Make sure kalau sembilan markah dapat sembilan markah sebab ada masalah kan? Okay, boleh? Boleh. Kan semua bijak bestari. Okay, now we go to question number two. Okay, we go to question number two. Yes, this this topic. Okay, this one is the chemical cell. So, yang pertama kamu kena tahu chemical cell ni will change the chemical energy tukar kepada electrical energy. Macam mana kamu nak identify? Kamu tengok. Dalam gambar rajah ini dia guna volt meter. So volt meter ni akan menentukan sama ada elektron moving or not. So in this case yang pertama kamu kena tahu which one negative terminal, which one positive terminal. So how to identify yang mana positive terminal, yang mana negative terminal? Macam mana kamu nak tahu yang ini positive terminal, yang ini negative terminal? How? How, how, how? More electropositive. Very good. More electropositive become what? Bakis. Afrika Bakis. Okay, very good. Afrika Bakis. Okay. So, which one Afrika Bakis? Which one is uh, negative terminal? Zinc ke copper? Zinc. Pandai. Very good. Negative terminal and then automatic copper become positive. Terminal. Cikgu tahu ada a few of you yang confused. Cikgu yang ni negative terminal, positive terminal. Kenapa untuk elektrolitik sel yang itu anode ketod? Ingat, anode, anode bermaksud dekat elektrod ni dia akan release elektron. Anode ketod yang akan release elektron. Eh, ketod pula. Elektrod dia akan release elektron. Kalau ketod dia akan receive elektron. Okay, kalau ketot dia akan receive. Okay, ketot dia akan receive elektron. Receive elektron. Okay. So, kalau case macam ini, zinc metal, walaupun dia negatif terminal sebab zinc akan release elektron, so this one we call as anode. While copper metal is ketot. Okay, look at here. Kita buat half equation at negative terminal or anode. Jangan confuse. Kalau elektrolitik, kalau elektrolitik, anode akan jadi positif terminal. Cuma ingat dalam kepala yang release elektron is anode. Itu sahaja. Okay, now look at the half equation at zinc metal. Zn N will release electron become Zn N to plus plus 2E. Okay, so settle for this one. Okay, untuk positif terminal, nampak ada copper metal. Copper metal ni tak akan receive elektron. Yang terlibat dalam receive elektron is ion in this solution. So, you must tulislah ada berapa banyak uh, ion dalam solution ni. Ada Cu2+, SO4 2 minus, ada H+, and OH minus. So, untuk positif terminal, yang mana akan receive elektron? 
Antara empat-empat ni, which one yang akan receive elektron? Copper metal ke copper ion? Okay, copper ion. Bukan copper metal. So this one yang akan receive. Okay, dua ini memang tak akan receive elektron. Sebab apa? Sebab elektron tu charge nya negatif. Yang akan terima mestilah charge positif. So which one? Kita akan pilih based on ECS. So Cu is lower position than H plus. So Cu will receive electron. So half equation here is Cu to plus plus 2E and become Cu. So kalau soalan tanya pula, what happen to zinc metal after few minutes? Apa nak jawab? What happen to the zinc metal after few minutes? Very good. Become thinner. What happen to the copper metal? after few minutes. What happened to the copper? They are okay. The, the copper metal will deposit the mass of copper metal increase. Okay, very good. Pandai. Pandai. Good? Okay now, state the ions in copper to sulfate solution. First of all, apa itu cat ion? What you understand about cat ion? Cat ion, nampak ni ada huruf T kat sini. Maksudnya cat ion itu dia mesti Charge apa? Positif. Very good. And ion adalah charge negatif. So this one negative, this one positif. So dia kata state the ions in copper to sulfate. Maksudnya semua yang positif. So tulis sajalah Cu to plus ion and H plus ion. Kalau N ion is SO4 to minus and OH minus. Tulis lengkap macam ni then you get two marks. Kena tulis semua ion yang ada sebab solution mesti ada air. Okay next. Ada soalan nak tanya? Okay tak ada kita sambung. State the negative terminal. Okay tadi dekat atas kita dah pumpang-pumpang. Negative terminal is more electropositive metal. More electropositive. So the answer is zinc. Okay, zinc adalah negatif terminal. Okay, next. Okay, now we go to the next question. After 20 minutes, state the observation at zinc. Ah, cikgu pun dah tanya. So, what is the observation guys? Apa observation dia? Zinc electrode become thinner. Very good kacun. Zinc metal... Oh, zinc electrode become thinner, makin menipis. Okay, next. Alright, next. We go to the next question. Okay, okay. Write the half equation for the reaction occur at zinc and at copper. Okay, dah tulis dah tadi Zn because dia negative terminal dia akan release. Electron become Zn2 plus plus 2. E, while copper electrode, copper ion in the solution will receive electron. Cu2 plus plus 2 E and then Cu. Make sure the half equation pun Balance. Kalau dekat cas ni tu plus, make sure elektron tu dua. So Zn ni tak payah letak letak dua ke apa sebab Zn dekat sini satu, sini satu. Cas mesti tally dengan number of elektron. Okay, state the observations of the copper to sulfate solution. Copper to sulfate solution. Apa warna? What is the color for copper to sulfate solution? Blue. So lama-lama what happen? Bila All the copper ion become copper metal dekat positive terminal lama-lama jadi apa? Okay, pandai. The intensity of copper to sulfate solution decrease ataupun the color of copper to sulfate solution become pale. Very good. Satu markah. Kita baru satu markah tau. Observation tu satu markah. Okay, kita tulis dekat sini. Kena apa dia? Okay, in intensity of blue color of copper to sulfate solution 
Bikram Bikris boleh, Bikram Pil boleh Satu markah And then reason, why Why the intensity of blue color of copper to solution decrease because of what? Because concentration because concentrations of copper to plus in copper to sulfate decrease. Faham tak ayat cikgu ni? Why the intensity of blue color decrease or become pale because concentrations of copper ion in copper to sulfate decrease. Copper discharge to form copper. Okay, see you discharge as copper atom and deposited at cathode. Copper to ion discharge to form copper atom. Okay, copper to ion is discharged at positive terminal and produce copper atom. Boleh, boleh terima juga tu sama. Maksudnya kamu kata dia digunakan Uh, dia akan discharge dekat negatif, eh sorry dekat positif terminal Okay nak betulkan edaan, decrease Okay next A student wants to increase the voltage of the cell Okay dia minta kita increasekan the voltage of the cell So what should we do? Dia kata apakah metal yang suitable to replace zinc? So kalau kalau kita nak hasilkan voltage yang lebih tinggi, lebih higher means the distance between two metals in ECS mesti further. Okay, very good. Pandai. Most of you letak MG. Cikgu nak pesan tolong, tolong, tolong jangan letak yang tiga dekat atas tu. So dia potassium, calcium jangan letak sebab dia tu reaktif. Terlampau reaktif so it's not suitable. So start letak guna MG. Okay, betul kacau. Mesti dia higher ECS from zinc. Baru dapat uh, higher voltage. Perfect. Mandai. Okay, now we go to question number three. Okay, we go to question number three. Okay, question number three. Diagram three shows a series of chemical reaction. Okay, ZN plus HCl. The product are ZN, Cl2 and then we release hydrogen. Yes, ini uh, reaction antara metal and acid. Dapatlah salt zinc chloride dengan hydrogen gas. Okay now zinc chloride bila kita react dengan lead to nitrate dia akan dapat this one. Zinc nitrate is soluble salt. Okay. Manakala solid B. Nama pun solid B kita tahu ini adalah precipitate. Okay, precipitate. Maksudnya dia adalah insoluble salt. So agak-agak apa nama insoluble salt ni? Apakah nama insoluble salt ni? Lead to chloride. Pandai. Very good. Lead to chloride. Lead to chloride. Okay. So name solution T. First dia minta kita nyatakan apa itu solution T. Okay, kita tengok solution T tadi kita dah buat. Solution T adalah zinc. Nama eh, name. Name wajib tulis nama zinc chloride. Okay, next. Guess you. Guess you produce is colorless gas. Explain how to identify guess you. Ah, dah banyak kali dah. Jangan kamu kata uh, using... Uh, burning wooden splinter, pop sound produce, salah. Pop sound produce tu je dapat makan, yang atas tu salah. So method tu kena tulis betul-betul. Apa method yang sesuai? What is the suitable method? Yang proper, yang sesuai. Okay, apa kita nak tulis? Kita uh, place burning wooden splinter at the mouth of Test tube. Satu markah. Kena tunjukkan secara detail apa you buat. And then barulah the, the product. Okay. Pop. Pop sound. Produce. Okay. Bening guna splinter near the mouth of the test tube. Nah, no need to fill test tube with gas you. Okay. Kalau tu nak tambah dekat atas tu, collect. Gas you, 
Itu the test tube, ha, lepas tu ambil point number Point cikgu ni boleh tu Tapi yang penting mesti Kamu tak boleh lah cakap using burning water splinter Lip of test tube Lip of the test tube and then Brian Apa maksud kamu lip of the test tube Tu kamu boleh guna ayat kamu tu dan tambah ayat cikgu tu Okay next Oh lip Oh instead of maaf Boleh asalkan faham benda tu sampai betul Cikgu tahu kamu nak letak dari dekat uh, Bibit test tube tu betul Okay next we go to question C In step 2, in step 1 20 cm cube of 1 mol HCl is react with excess zinc powder Write the chemical equation dekat atas tu kita dah tulis So Marilah kita tulis chemical equation antara HCl dengan ZN and then the product are ZN Cl2 plus H to make sure the reaction satu markah kalau tak balance and then make sure balance put two here okay cukup and then you akan dapat dua markah very mudah easy actually Okay now calculate the maximum volume of gas U that produce. Okay based on the equation ni minta kita cari volume. Berapa volume? Kat sini data dia bagi 1 mol per dm cube dengan uh, 20 cm cube. Okay yang ni excess. So memandangkan the excess kita tak ambil lah dia untuk comparison. Kita ambil lah H. Yeah, calculate the maximum volume of gas you that can be produced at room condition. Volume, room condition. So first step, find mole of HCl. So using N equals to MV over 1000. Okay. Then kita just substitute. M dia adalah. Okay. M adalah satu. Volume adalah 20 and then divide by 1000 Then tekan-tekan calculator you akan dapat 0.02 more 0.02 more Then the second step cikgu dah ajar banyak kali we do ratio Ratio between what? HCl dengan H2 So HCl from equation tengok balik equation dekat atas HCl is 2 Okay, H adalah 1. Okay, then substitute 0 0.02. So, this one adalah 0 0.01. Okay, tu ratio. Then volume sedang saja to find volume. To find volume, mole mesti times dengan molar volume. So 0 0.01 times molar volume kat atas tu dia dah bagi 24 Tekan calculator is 0 0.24 Ingat unit mesti betul untuk volume 0 0.24 dm cube So markah pertama mole of HCl The second mark is for ratio And third mark is for final answer Any question? Ah, zero point. Okay, alright. Betul lah eh? dapat sama dengan cikgu. Okay, now we go to the next question. Question D. Okay, now we go to question D. They ask you explain how can you obtain pure solid 5 from the reaction mixture. Maksudnya dia dah campurkan together kan. Dia dah campur uh, lead to nitrate dengan apa tadi? Dia dah campur dua dah tadi antara lead to nitrate dengan Sorry ah, Betul lah uh, lead to nitrate dengan zinc chloride dia dah campur together So macam mana kamu nak dapat? Apa first step dia? First kamu filter the mixture Okay filter the mixture And rinse it by using distilled water Okay, lepas tu bila dah filter and uh, by and rinse by using distilled water, kita keringkan dia betul. Okay, press it between two filter paper. 
to dry it. Okay. All right. So inilah cara how to obtain or to get a pure solid five that is led to chloride. Okay, next question number four. Okay, we go to question number four. Diagram 4.1 show the formations of rust on the surface of iron gate. State the conditions for rusting. Okay, apakah syarat-syarat uh, or conditions supaya rusting boleh berlaku? Ada dua sahaja condition. Mesti ada apa? Ada dua ni then you can get one mark. Okay, very good. Mesti ada high water and oxygen. Mesti ada both. Okay, condition dia is water and oxygen. Okay, ada juga jawapan boleh terima air. Okay, next. The rusting is iron of iron is a redox. Name the substance that is oxidized. So yang mana akan oksidas dekat sini, yang mana akan receive oksigen? Which one? Pandai. So substance yang oksidas adalah iron. Okay, so write the half equation Fe. So kalau oksidas dia mesti release elektron, dia akan jadi Fe2 plus plus 2E. Okay. Cikgu nak tanya kenapa iron ni kalau ikutkan yang kamu belajar Fe2 plus ni warna dia adalah betul kacun. Warna dia adalah warna green but why color for rusting is uh, brown. Ada siapa-siapa boleh explain? Siapa-siapa boleh cerita? How come the color of uh, rusting is brown? Bukannya green. Kalau ikutkan sini Fe2 plus green kan? Ha. Macam mana? Siapa nak jawab? Pandai Amanda, further oxidation dengan oksigen. Siapa yang adakah Fe2 plus ni yang akan further oxidation Amanda? Is it Fe2 plus will further oxidation? Ada? <laughs> Elah macam mana boleh dapat Fe3 plus tu Jansen? Adakah Fe2 plus ni yang akan further undergo uh, further oxidation? Apa Jansen? Tiba-tiba yes Jansen. Ah, macam mana boleh oksidas kuiman? Takkanlah daripada Fe2 plus terus lagi sambung. <laughs> ya ke kacun? Ya ke kacun? Okey, cikgu ingatkan balik eh. Fe2 plus ni kalau ikutkan bila dia re release elektron, apa yang akan terima elektron dia ni? Ha, lupa lah tu. Apa yang akan terima elektron dia? Tak ingat. Ha, tu masalahnya. Ah, Marilyn, Marilyn jawab. Yeah, Marilyn tu ada tanda-tanda. Okay Marilyn macam mana boleh Fe2 plus jadi ion hydroxide tu Marilyn? Macam mana boleh dapat ion tu uh, hydroxide? Ha, Marilyn punya tu betul dah. Cuma nak tanya macam mana Marilyn boleh dapat uh, ion tu hydroxide? Pandai. Siapa kat ni ni? Ah betul. Okey. Bila Fe2 plus tu, Fe2 plus. Okey. Bila Fe2 plus, dia akan release elektron betul. So elektron ni akan diterima oleh apa? Hydroxide. Ingat tak? Hydroxide. Air kan? Air. Kan uh, conditions untuk uh, rusty ke ada air. Lagi ada Uh, oksigen, ada 4E, diterima elektron dapat hydroxide ni kan? Ni hydroxide ni. So nanti kita balance kan lah. Okay. So kita balance kan. Okay dapat lah. So this one yang cikgu circle ni hydroxide ni dia akan combine dengan ini. Dia akan combine dengan OH- so dia akan dapat yang Marilyn dapat tadi. FeOH2. Iron tu Hydroxide. So this uh, iron tu hydroxide ni yang akan mengalami further oxidation tu yang dapat iron 3 oxide. Inilah rusting. Okay hydrated iron 3 oxide. Maksudnya campur sekali dengan water. Iron 3 
hydroxide. Inilah warna brown rusting. Inilah asal usulnya macam mana rusting tu warna brown. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okey tak Amanda? Dah okey tak? Okey, minta maaf lah. Laptop pun sama tua dengan tuan dia. Okey, next. Boleh tak Amanda? Boleh faham tak yang ni macam mana boleh jadi uh, rusting? Yang penting faham. Okey, very good. Iron 2 plus ni, this iron 2 plus akan combine dengan hydroxide ion yang dapat daripada reduction of water and then akan dapat iron 2 hydroxide. Iron 2 hydroxide further oxidation baru dapat iron 3 oxide. Uh, darab dengan water. Nama dia hydrated iron 3 oxide. Okay, next. Iron gate rust faster in coastal area. Coastal area Sebab apa? Dekat coastal area ni ada apa? Because coastal area ni dia banyak apa? Dia kawasan pantai, kawasan laut kan? It contain? Okay. Coastal area contain a lot of salt. Okay, dia banyak garam yang mempunyai that have a lot of ions. Bila dia ada garam, dia akan mengandungi banyak Ion. So, ion-ion ni yang menyebabkan uh, the concentrations of electrolyte dekat air tu lebih tinggi. So, so it make it make the concentrations of electrolyte so it make the concentration of electrolyte in air higher. Bila concentration of electrolyte higher, lagi cepatlah uh, rusting berlaku. Pandai, betul? Coastal area ada salt. Satu, dekat dalam salt water banyak apa? Contains a lot of ions. Bila terlampau banyak ion, ada free moving ion. So this free moving ion akan menyebabkan electrolyte tu, the concentration dia higher. So it can uh, menyebabkan rusting tu berlaku lebih faster. Peher ke tidak? Faham kan? Okay. Okay next. Okay we go to question number four. Okay sikit lagi. Asset question, question two. Suggest one way to prevent rusting of the iron gate. Okay. So apa kita nak buat prevent dia daripada rusting? Pertama kita boleh paintkan dia atau kita boleh bubur grease. Atau kita boleh coat dia, coating with more electro for retrieve metal. Okay. Paham up. Paint. Okay, macam mana kita nak prevent rusting untuk iron, iron gate kita cat. Oh kita letak grease, oh kita coat dia dengan more electro positive. Metal. Okay next. D. Diagram 4.2 shows the operator set up to construct reactivity series of metal. Reactivity series of metal. Metal oxide dengan carbon. Okay macam ni je kaedah. Cikgu rasa soalan ni soalan-soalan lain pun ada keluar juga yang ini. Okay now look at the diagram here. Set 1. Carbon plus aluminium oxide. No changes. Maksudnya kalau no changes Carbon ni mesti below dan aluminium. So carbon bawah, aluminium atas. Okay. Okay kalau carbon dengan oxide of X ni dia brown solid form. Kita tahu dah the one and only brown solid form mesti adalah copper. So copper mesti dekat bawah. And then dia tanya suggest metal X. Brown solid form. The one and only that is copper. Okay. Sekejap eh. Sekejap tak sekejap
Okay, kita sambung untuk charge bateri laptop tadi. Okay, mari kita sambung. Okay, now. Okay, based on set 1 and set 2, explain the differences in observation. Dah cakap banyak kali dah. If the observation no changes, means no reactions occur, carbon below then aluminium. Kalau the observation ni ada reaction, means carbon dia ada, dia higher position than metal X. So, kita kena cerita lah. Cerita berdasarkan konsep redox. Okay, mari kita tulis macam mana nak tulis. Okay, kita cerita satu-satu. Okay. In set one, carbon less reactive than aluminium. Okay, so carbon cannot reduce AL from AL2 O3. Okay, ini case untuk set 1. Okay, now in set 2, okay, in set 2, carbon more reactive than metal X. So, carbon can reduce Uh, metal X from its oxide. Dapat dua marka. Boleh? Faham tak? So dua marka, satu marka untuk set one. Kenapa no reaction? Marka kedua, kenapa ada reaction? Okay now, senang lah soalan. Senang saja. Okay now, arrange X carbon and aluminium in ascending order. Menaik. Maksudnya daripada less reactive to the most reactive. In ascending order based on the reactivity towards oxygen. Menaik. Maksudnya less reactive. Less to most reactive. So yang paling is X or copper tadi. X followed by carbon and then the most reactive is aluminium. Dua markah. Eh sorry satu markah. In X. Okey, kita pergi ke pada soalan kelima. Okey. Two set of experiment were carried out to study the rate of reaction between magnesium powder and nitric acid at room temperature. Okey, kita tulis dulu equation antara magnesium campur nitric acid. Okey, the product are magnesium nitrate plus Hydrogen, yes. Okay, balance kan. Okay, kita tengok kedua-duanya. Set 1, 50 cm cube, 0.8 mol nitric acid and 0.5 gram magnesium powder. Set 2, sama cuma ada extra copper tu, sulfate. Yang lain semua sama. So, apa beza dua-dua ni? Can write CU lah? Boleh. Sebab kita dah tahu dah kacut itu memang CU. Okay, copper tu sulfate adalah Catalyst. So catalyst ni will increase the rate of reaction without changing itself chemically. So kalau kamu tengok secara logik ya, set 1 ke set 2 yang mempunyai ROR yang higher? Set 1 ke set 2? Wah pandai. Tengok pandai dah. Boleh dah jawab SPM. Okay kita tengok time taken this one 30, this one only take 12 second. Okay soalan seterusnya. Based on table 5, dia minta kamu state the, the meaning or definitions of rate of reaction. So rate of reaction adalah changes in sebab dia kata table 5 kan. Table 5 so kita kena fokus kepada table 5 punya ni lah. Experiment. Okay. Changes in mass. Boleh kan? Boleh tak changes in mass? Mass of magnesium. Okay. Changes in mass of magnesium powder per unit time or over time. Sebab dia kata fokus kepada table 5. Dia tak nak general. Dia nak fokus kepada table 5. So changes in the mass of magnesium powder per unit time. Alright, next. 
We go to the calculate the average rate of ratio for set 1 and set 2. Okay, untuk soalan yang ini kamu tengok. Dalam jadual ni, dia minta kita tengok apa? Dia minta kita tengok berapakah masa. Okay, time taker for magnesium powder completely dissolve. Okay, so kita kena fokuskan berapakah masa dengan mass magnesium powder ni. Okay, mari kita isi berdasarkan data yang dia bagi ni. So for set 1, kita guna 0.4 for magnesium powder. Okay, then kita bahagi dengan masa yang diambil adalah selama 30 saat. Sama dengan cikgu dapat 0.0133 unit jangan lupa gram per second. Sebab kita guna mass of magnesium powder. Same goes to set 2. So set 2 using 0.4 gram and then we divide by uh, time 12 second and then kita akan dapat 0.03 3 gram per second. Okay. The rate of the change in the mass powder, magnesium powder rate, the rate of the change. Ah. Uh, Kalau definition mesti ada changes in blah 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 mesti per unit time. Dia tak boleh the rate of the change tak boleh. Dia mesti ada per unit time at the end. Change of apa blah 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 per unit time. Wajib ada per unit time. Okay. Okay now we go to the next question. Diagram 5.1 shows the energy profile diagram for set 1. Kita tahu Dah, kalau set 1 dia without catalyst kan Okay kita label siap-siap set 1 Sketch the energy profile diagram for set 2 Kita tahu kalau set 2 using catalyst uh, EA dia Alternative EA dia ni The value for EA ni akan jadi rendah Activation energy dia akan jadi rendah So curve dia memang bermula daripada titik yang sama Cuma dia punya ni akan jadi lebih lower Sebab apa lower? So EA dia lebih rendah ni. Ni EA dia. Okay yang ini EA untuk set 1. So ini adalah label. Ini adalah set 2. Sebab dia ada copper 2 sulfate. Solution as a what? As, as a uh, uh, as a catalyst. Okay next. Okay, compare the rate of reaction between set 1 and set 2 dari segi collision theory. Okay, pertama, untuk uh, catalyst, yang pertama mesti ada apa? Rate of reaction kita cerita dulu. Yang pertama, okay, rate of reaction for set 2 is higher than set one. Okay, ni yang pertama. Yang kedua, kenapa? Set to using catalyst that provide alternative pathway okay, pathway with lower Activation energy. Okay. Okay next. Okay so bila uh, dia ada alternative pathway maksudnya masih ada shortcut. So more colliding particles can achieve it. Okay then barulah last kali frequency frequency of effective collision between mg2 plus and hydrogen ion greater in set 2 compared to set 1. Nampak markah. Ha, provide alternative pathway. Betul. 
Okey. Kamu perkataan with ni dengan tau. Kamu jangan tulis by. Dia tidak merendahkan lower activation energy, dia memberikan lower activation energy. Okey dia dia tidak me, dia tidak merendahkan, dia bagi jalan lain. Maksudnya alternatif, jalan kedua macam shortcut. Faham maksud dia? So kamu perkataan by tu tak boleh. With baru tepat sesuai. Provide alternative pathway. Okey. Next. Okey next kita pergi soalan uh, dalam soalan seterusnya soalan donkey Diagram 5.2 shows two different conditions in of storing food Satu keep in refrigerator, one more in room at room temperature Okey in which condition will the food last longer? Okey mestilah in condition In condition A Okey markah yang pertama kenapa condition A because in A Temperature is Temperature is Lower Okay so bila temperature is lower Kejap lah Ada satu lagi soalan Polijah kacau cikgu Okay in, Tengok hilang fokus dah Okay in condition A satu markah Temperature is lower satu markah So it will It will uh -uh. It will slower the growth of <laughs> microorganism or bacteria okay okay betul tu Amanda hai polijah Amanda cakap sibuk polijah ni okay last last jangan 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 ni polijah jangan laju polijah okay sikit lagi last one Okay, last question. Okay, last question. Alright. Okay, soalan favorite. Diagram 6 shows the compound X from glucose and it conversions to several other compound. Okay, glucose. Glucose, formula glucose is C6H12O6. Orang bayu mesti terror lah ni. Okay, bila glukos jadi compound X, kalau kamu tengok compound X ni apa? C2H5OH, that is ethanol. Betul? Bila glukos hasilkan ethanol, dia menggunakan proses apa? Ferment, fermentation. Okay, then. Okay, fermentation. Okay now daripada etanol dia menggunakan porcelain chip dia akan hasilkan apa guys? Etin iaitu alkin. Okay etanol dapat etin. Apa nama proses ni? Dia remove water so dehydration. Okay next. Sit. Then daripada etanol da, proses apa dapat carbon dioxide and water? Carbon dioxide and water dapat apa? Combustion. So maksudnya kita tambah O2. Tengok formula dia jadi apa? C2 H5OH plus oxygen and then the product are CO2 plus H2O. Cikgu dah pesan banyak kali kalau untuk uh, carbon compound untuk balance kat equation pertama look at the carbon. Kalau di sini dua, sini dua. And then look at H. H ada 6. So bobo 3 sini. Last kali baru tengok oksigen. Oksigen sini ada 4, sini ada 3. So we have 7. Okay sini pun kena 7 lah. Okay 3 times 2 6 plus 1 7. Dah confirm balance. Okay last one kita tengok macam mana proses 4 berlaku. Daripada etanol dapat Uh, daripada etanol macam mana kita boleh dapat proses 4 dapat etanoic acid Ini namanya proses apa? Etanoic acid Okay macam mana boleh dapat etanoic acid? Oxidation pandai Okay oxidation reaction Okay, oxidation reaction ada dua bahan yang kita boleh guna. Apakah dia guys? Ada dua substance we can use as oxidizing agent yang akan digunakan untuk oxidation. Apa dia? Acidified potassium manganese 
7 one more acid fat potassium mangan sorry lagi satu acid fat potassium dichromate 6 so dua tu adalah oxidation yang digunakan untuk oxidation very good betul ah ini soalannya soalan A siapa boleh jawab name the enzyme produced by yeast ah orang bio boleh jawab tak Wei pandai Zimex pandai kamu ni rupanya Cari kat Google ke memang dalam buku dia? Ah kena Google kan? Ya betul. Tambah ilmu. <laughs> Ingatnya Dr. Amanda tahu dah. Zimis. Okay. Alright next. Pakai sekolah punya. Okay. Draw the structural formula for X. Okay, X apa ha? X. Tengok balik X. Okay, X adalah alkohol. Okay, senang saja untuk lukis structural of alcohol. Mesti ada C2, 1, 2. And then jangan lupa alkohol mesti ada hydroxyl group. Pastikan C2 attached pada O. Okay, satu markah. Okay, next. Okay, next. C. Mana soalan C? Sekejap eh, tengok soalan C. Okay, compound Y is formed when the vapor of compound X that is ethanol is passed over the heated porcelain chip. Then dia minta kamu draw label diagram. Dah pesan banyak kali kalau label diagram markah yang pertama adalah berfungsi atau tidak. Yang kedua mesti ada label. Kalau kamu label beria bagai nak mati pun kalau tak berfungsi kosong. Dia auto akan jadi kosong. So cara untuk lukis adalah pertama mesti ada gambar boiling tube. Okay boiling tube tu buatlah macam ada pegang uh, dengan kaki retort and then ini adalah ethanol soak in wool. Okay glass wool terbalik soak with ethanol. Okay Then ini adalah porcelain chip. Okay ini adalah porcelain chip. Okay ini adalah porcelain chip. Allah Akbar. Okay kita lukis porcelain chip. Maksudnya cikgu kena alihkan sikit dulu pemegang ni. Takkanlah nak bakar dekat sini kan. Okey. Letak kat sini lah dia punya lukisan. Payah pula nak lukis kejap ya. Okey ni kita lukis dia punya pemegang. Allah Akbar kenapa lah ni. Jadi kamu lukislah pemegang tu payahlah pula. Okay. So then yang ini kamu letaklah heat. Kita heat kat sini kan. Okay letak pemegang. Ha, dah boleh lah pula. Okay letak pemegang. And then pastikan yeah. ini ada uh, stopper kan. Okay then masukkan okay. delivery tube. Assalamualaikum semua dan selamat sejahtera. Okay. Mari kita mulakan sekarang. Mari kita mulakan sekarang semua anak murid cikgu. Okay sambungkan dia ke dalam okay. beaker okay. eh. Okay. Kita kasih. ambil beaker. Okay untuk hari ini cikgu nak bincang yang kertas uh, yang, bu uh, yang buku kerja saja. Dan saya. kita letak gas. Yang buku kerja. Uh, ni test Sebab tube. Minggu depan, minggu depan. Okay, uh, ni basin with water. Okay, labelkan ni water. 
Ini porcelain chip. Okay, jadi cikgu beranggapan semua murid ada buku kerja. Betul tak? Yang okay, ini betul-betul kan sikit. Ha, okay. Uh, Sama alah lukisan hodoh. Yang warna biru. Boleh ya? Eh? Ada tak kelas? Boleh cikgu tengok komen ni? Ha, boleh. Ha, ni porcelain chip ni. Okay, ni porcelain chip. Uh, nak okay. saja secara secara lintas. Okay next. Kita pergi okay, soalan seterusnya. Suggest okay, a chemical okay. test to identify compound Y. Okay, okay compound Y tadi tu apa? Compound Y tu adalah Ah, uh, Compound Y adalah uh, Itin tadi kan. So apa nak buat? Okay, nak test gas mestilah. Pass through gas Y into the bromine water plus satu marka. And then what happen? Bromine water will recolorize. Okay. Betul. Okay, next. Jadi pada hari ini saya akan um, Alright, a chemical equation for reaction in process 3 Maksudnya uh, alcohol Google, react uh, dengan oksigen Saya akan bantu uh, quizik okay. Dan akan saya tag di dalam grade plus geografi tiga usaha Okay, tambah uh, oksigen Akan jari. dapat carbon okay, dioxide plus water. Okay, satu markah, kerja, satu markah lagi untuk balance. Okey, kita balancekan dua. H6. Okey, tiga. So sini empat, sini tiga, tujuh. So tiga dah dua enam, tambah satu, tujuh. Okey, E. Okey, kepala Z liberate carbon dioxide gas when calcium carbonate is added to it. Take the functional group of compound Z. Compound Z dihasilkan carbon dioxide bila react dengan calcium carbonate. So kita tahu dah compound Z ni apa? Carboxylic acid. Okay functional group dia apa? Functional, dia, functional group dia adalah carboxyl. Cuma kamu ambil jawapan yang saya bagi. Bandar. Okay next. Kalau kamu dah tulis mungkin ada tertinggal ke dalam sebagainya. Okay next. Hampir nak siap dah. Okay, name a reagent that is suitable okay. to be used in process 4. Okay, ada dua tadi kita dah cakap dah. Sama ada untuk mempersembahkan sesuatu Sama ada acidified, potassium, manganet, seven solution or untuk kegunaan jadual. Residified, potassium, mat, dichromate, six solution. So mana-mana betul. Okay, compound Z react with compound X. Compound Z react with compound X that is carboxylic acid kan. Ini carboxylic acid. Compound Z and compound X alcohol to produce substance with a pleasant smell, sweet smell kan. Formula molecule. So formula kita tengok. Compound Z adalah CH3COOH. Alkohol adalah C2H5OH. So cara tulis ester, ini ester. So cara tulis ester mesti carboxylic acid dulu. So CH3COO. So dia ambil alkohol belakang ni. C2H5. So nama dia adalah, saja tanya nama, nama dia adalah etil. Etanoid. Um, saya cakap hari tu exam saya nak keluarkan berapa Okey betul. Pandai kacut. Betul. Okey habis dah. Okey graf bar dan juga graf. Hmm. Ada lagi satu graf bar dengan graf apa? Yes graf bar dengan graf. 